بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد the scholars of Al Islam who pay a lot of attention to the most important aspect of this religion which is a tawheed those scholars have given us a definition of what it is to be a Muslim and what is Al Islam the definition if someone were to ask what is a Muslim many people will say one who submits this interpretation and definition has been going around for a long time and it is okay because that is part what it is to be a Muslim but it has a fuller more comprehensive meaning than that Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah one of those scholars who paid a lot of attention to at tawheed he said and gave us a definition of al-Islam that has three aspects to it that are important. Each one is important. He said, Al-Islam is al-istislamu lillahi bit-tawheed wal-inqiyadu lahu bit-ta'a wal-bara'atu min shirk wa ahlihi. Al-Islam is for a person to submit to Allah Azza wa Jal in and with Tawheed. He submits to Allah with Tawheed. Number two, it is that the individual, he obeys Allah and he does what Allah told him to do. al bitta'a. Those things that Allah told him to do, make salat, give zakat, wear hijab, be diligent in respecting the parents, all of those things is a part of what Islam is. Number three, he said, al baraatu min shirk wa ahlihi. Freeing oneself from shirk and all of its manifestations and freeing oneself from the people of his shirk. Now there are many people who are Muslims who something is wrong with one of these three or all three of them. And that many people don't submit to Allah with Tawheed. They are Muslims, but they make shirk with Allah. They call on other than Allah. They make dua to other than Allah. They legislate other than what Allah legislated. And they believe that it's okay. Modernist and other than that. Even some practice in Muslims. Some practice in Muslims. The second thing, al inqiyad with, with, with a ta'a making oneself do the things that Allah told him or her to do. There are many Muslims who don't pray, who don't fast, who drink khamr. Many Muslims who gamble. Many. And then there's the third one. Al-bara'atu min shirk wa ahlihi. Freeing oneself from shirk and the people of shirk. There are many Muslims who take mushrikeen as their protectors and their friends. There are many Muslims who don't free themselves from shirk and kufr for different reasons, for a variety of reasons. It's this third aspect of the definition of al-Islam that we want to focus upon today with special emphasis to the younger people here, brothers and sisters, you younger people, but all of us, it's a reminder. So again, what is al-Islam? And Islam is submitting oneself to Allah with Tawheed. Number two, doing the things that Allah told you to do, to obey Allah to the best of your ability. And number three, freeing oneself from a shirk and the people of shirk, polytheism. Allah Ta'ala mention something in the Quran Ikhwani about freeing oneself from shirk and from the people of a shirk and that is what was mentioned in the dua of Ibrahim when he said to Allah Azza wa Jal wajnubni wa baniya and na'abdul asnam rabbi innuhunna adlalna kathira minan nas 
Ibrahim made a dua, oh Allah, save me and save my children from worshiping idols. Oh our Lord, verily those idols have sent many people away. This is Ibrahim who is showing us something really important. He is the Khalil of Allah, the friend of Allah. He's one of the five major messengers. And yet he sought protection in Allah Azawajal, guidance from Allah, help and assistance from Allah to protect himself, but not only himself, but to protect his children from the worship of Asnam. As I see here, it's very difficult to fathom Ibrahim in reality worshiping an idol. It's difficult. He's from the major Anbiya and the Rasul, salawatullah wa salamu alayhim, ajma'in. And yet, he was humble enough and he had enough taqwa to do that, which is a sign and an indication. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to be in sajda, he used to say to Allah, Allahumma, ya muqallibul qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. The Nabi knew he wasn't going to go astray, but he was humble and he was teaching us. If he's the Sayyid of Bani Adam, and the khatam of the Anbiya and Mursaleen, and he's asking for thabat, what about you, 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 you and me and everybody else? One of the biggest tricks of the shaitan is to make people comfortable with, I'm practicing and I have a beard, and I have a degree from the University of Medina, and I recognize and I see that a Salafi is the truth, I'm okay. That's not enough. A person has to be afraid of going astray. A person has to feel a need to make dua, dua to Allah and the dua should include his children as well. His children as well. Because we're living in a society today that everybody's sitting there. Your children, your wives, ourselves. There is an assault on our aqidah and our, our akhlaq. Christmas is an assault on our children right now. The Muslim child that goes to public school and his parents took the time out to go and say, I don't want them participating in any Christmas festivities or activities. No play of the nativity. I don't want them exchanging cars. I don't want them drawing anything. None of that. If Santa Claus comes, old man Christmas, I want to know. I want my kids sitting outside. I'm not going to sit. Even the parent that does that, his child is in the classroom and he's feeling left out, and no child wants to feel left out. He gets a million and one things coming to his head, what's going on? And that's the child who sees his parent practicing the religion. Naturally, as a child, he wants to be included. Why can't I just draw old man Christmas and so forth and so on? There is an assault, especially during these days. So part of being a Muslim is, and part of practicing Islam, is that the person has to make a declaration that he frees himself from shirk and from the mushrikeen. Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned in one of the greatest ayats or surahs of the Quran that although it's small in the number of ayat, it is heavy in its implication and it's heavy with the emphasis that the Nabi used to place on it Sallallahu Wasallam for Fajr. Whenever he would make two rakats for Fajr, the sunnah, he would read in the first rakat, and in that surah, Lekum dinukum deen. He read that for every fajr, the sunnah. To you is your way and to me mine. Allah Ta'ala mentioned about Ibrahim. Qad kanat lakum fi Ibrahim. Qad kanat lakum uswatun hasanatun fi Ibrahim. Walladhina ma'ahu. إِذْ قَالُوا لِقَوْمِهِمْ إِنَّا بُرَآءَ مِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ كَفَرْنَا بِكُمْ وَبَدَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ أَبَدًا حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَحْدًا You people have in Ibrahim a perfect example. And him and those who were with him who believed when all of them said to their people, we disbelieve in you and what you worship other than Allah. Isa, whatever, we are free of you. And there exists between us and you animosity until you worship Allah all by himself. 
And it would always remain like that. Allah told us we had in Ibrahim a perfect example. Uswatun Hasana. He used that same description for the Nabi as well, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرُجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا You have in Rasulullah Wasallam a perfect example for the one who hopes to meet Allah and he remembers Allah a lot and he thinks about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. You have in the Nabi the perfect example to teach you those things. So the point here, Ikhwani, is concerning these days that are coming up. Part of being a Muslim is the father who usually doesn't go to school, he doesn't pick his child up, doesn't pick the child up or drop him off. And these days, we have to get involved with sitting those children down and telling them it's not permissible for the Muslim child to participate in any aspect of Christmas celebrations. From A to Z, not permissible. Now Muslims at the school may say, hey, this is a public school. So we take the Hindu children to the mosque and the Christian school children to the mosque and the Jewish children to the mosque. So as long as it's a public school, you have to get on board and you got to get the program. The Muslim, he says, if those parents of the Hindu children, the Sikh Christian children, if they allow that, that's their business. As for me, I don't allow it. I don't allow it. And that's your right. That's your right as a Muslim. It's only for a few days. You don't have to allow your child to go to a, ma to, to, a, to, a, to a synagogue, to a temple. You don't have to allow that. There's no law that says you have to allow it. You go and you look up the law, you see, you have the right that your child doesn't have to go in a public school. So concerning the issue of Christmas, it's not permissible for us to take this issue as an easy issue. And that's because, number one, Christmas is kufr and shirk. Number two, Christmas is a lie, is kathib. Talking about the birth of Isa ibn Maryam. And our religion doesn't allow us to condone what is a lie. Our religion doesn't allow it. Another issue is celebrating the celebrations of the kuffar is something that the Prophet opposed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Anyone who resembles a people, then he is from those people. And one of the closest ways to resemble a group of people is to celebrate and to participate in their ayat or their celebrations. Look what happened with the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In so many examples, it's not just one thing, it's so many issues that make this clear. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to al Medina and he found the people of al Medina, al Aus wal Khazraj, celebrating. He said, What are they celebrating? They said, This is a day that their forefathers used to glorify. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, In Allah qad baddala lakum ma huwa khayrun minhu. Allah has changed this. This celebration of theirs that you, you, you used to be upon, it was your culture, Allah has exchanged it and changed it for what is better. He gave you the Eid al-Adha and the Eid of al-Fitr. So he stopped the Aus and the Khazraj, Kofar the Arabs, from celebrating what their fathers used to do. Another example, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to al Medina for Mecca when he arrived he saw that the Jews were celebrating on a particular day. Just like the first incident, he said, what are they doing? They said, Ya Rasulullah, this is the day that Allah saved Musa from Fir'aun. The Nabi told them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nahnu ahaqu bi Musa minhum. We have more rights towards Musa than they do. So he started fasting. He said, next year, next year, if I'm living, I'm going to fast a day before this day, the 10th, or a day after, the 9th or the 12th. Which goes to show that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to be different at every opportunity than those non-Muslims. Ibrahim, in the Quran, Ibrahim, 
those ayahs that I mentioned, that he freed himself from the mushrikeen, Ibrahim, one of the reasons why Ibrahim was thrown in the fire, one of the reasons was because when the people wanted to go out for their celebration, Ibrahim said, I'm not going, I'm not feeling well, I'm sick, I'm saqim, I'm not feeling well. So they went out for the celebration that Ibrahim didn't want to participate with them in it. While they were out, he went to the idols. He broke the small one, he broke the middle one, and he wrapped the idol around the neck, he wrapped the hammer around the neck of the big one, the sledgehammer. When they came, they said, who did this to our guys? They said, we heard a young man by the name of Ibrahim talking about him. They went and said, Ibrahim, did you do this to our guys? He said, I didn't do it, ask the big one. If he can speak, he did it. They said, you know those guys don't speak. He said, then why do you worship that which can't speak or hear, can't help itself? So the point here is, not only did Ibrahim make al-amr bin maruf and nahyan al-munkar, enjoin the good and prevent the evil, not only did Ibrahim have the bravery to call to a tawheed, although there were going to be dire consequences, not only did Ibrahim do all of that, but he refused to go out to celebrate with the mushrikeen concerning their celebration. So those people said, help your gods, help your gods, and then he decided to throw them into the fire. So all of that is a proof and an indication of the impermissibility of our children participating in this Christmas in any shape, form, or fashion. Your child can't do something as innocent as getting a red hat and coming home with the red hat. That's innocent in the eyes of people who don't know a Tawheed. But in the eyes of the people of a Tawheed, that's a big thing. It's a big thing. The color red itself with that hat and that suit of old man Christmas is kufr. They have a goal in the objective. Why is old man Christmas hat, why, why is his clothes red and is, is not blue or green or black? Do we ever ask that question? Why is it red? And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al-Islam prohibited us from wearing that color in the first place. There's a problem with the color. Why did they come up with that color? So it's not innocent. The other issue, and I'm not with the Illuminati, the Illuminati, I'm not with the, this is our religion, this is our deen. Not permissible for the child to do any of that stuff, any of it. The man came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have taken an oath, another, that I'm going to slaughter a camel at a place called Bawana, Al Bawana. It was a special place. He said, I take an oath, I'm going to slaughter my camel at that place. I'm going to slaughter my camel at the bull ring. Someone can say, oh Allah, I take an oath. If my wife comes out of the pregnancy, okay. If this happens, that happens. I'm going to go to that bull ring where the bull is. And I'm going to give dawah to you for one hour. You can do that. You can do that. So just imagine it. It's not some... Hocus pocus. This is a real thing. So you imagine it like that. Today, there's a problem. Oh Allah, if you solve this problem for me, I'm going to go to that bull ring on Friday, Saturday, when there are a lot of people there, especially right now with all that Christmas stuff going on. So my wife says to me, let's go to the bull ring. Let's walk up and down. It's a nice ambiance out there. Smells. Anybody been to City Center at this time? It's a nice view. The lights, lah, that's not for the Muslim. But we're going to come to another point concerning that. If a person took that oath, like this man did, the prophet said to the man, that place, Bawana, is that a place where an idol of the mushrikeen, the polytheists, Kufar, do they have an idol there? Was there an idol there? He said, no. He said, that place where you're making this oath to do the oath, fulfill the oath, is it a place where they used to celebrate a celebration? He said, no. He said, then go ahead and fulfill your oath. How the man say, yes, there's a cross there. Yes, the idol of Allah al-Uzza is there. Yes, some other idol is there. The Nabi would have said, no. The Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty in New York, the lady with her hand up like that. That's not an idol that they worship. 
They don't worship that idol. But because it is an idol, it's not something that the Muslim in America who lives in New York, New Jersey, his child is going to the Statue of Liberty for a field trip on that day to go to Statue of Liberty. You go all the way up and you go inside of the torch and you're all the way up in the air. The Muslim father says, no, I'm not going to do it. Because the Nabi told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you come across any picture, you should deface it. If you come across any idol, you should break it up. That's what the prophet said. I want to make this clear. I don't want anybody to understand from what I'm saying that you have to go and destroy the Statue of Liberty in any shape, form, or fashion. I don't want people saying that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. But it is a statue in our homes, in our homes. When you come up to some people's homes, especially people who have nice homes in London, on the front of the home, there may be a lion here, a lion there, sitting out there. You have to break that off. You have to take that off. You have to break that off. You have to knock the nose off, knock the face off in Al-Islam. The Nabi told Ali ibn Abi Talib, you go out in the earth. He was going to Yemen. He sent him to a Yemen. He said, on your way to Yemen, from Medina to Yemen, I want every grave that you come by that's above the ground and elevated, make it equal to the earth. And every statue you come by, deface it. Break his head off. Break his arm off. So forth and so on. So the point here is, we've become used to shirk and kufr. And as a result of that, we can look at certain issues as being insignificant. And shirk and kufr is not insignificant with Allah Azza wa The days of the week, shirk and kufr, we got used to it. The months, shirk and kufr. We got used to it. Even in some of the stuff that we wear, as you all know, with the Nike emblem and all of those things like that, people just get used to things because we're living in this society and that's the challenge and that's the problem. That's the challenge and that's the problem. One of the reasons, Ikhwani, when we had that issue with the magic fiasco a few weeks ago, I'm of the opinion that... That type of magic that was being done, there are some ulama who have the opinion that it is not kufr. So in dealing with the person who believes that you can do that, I don't believe you should chop his head off. I don't believe you should call him a kafir. I don't believe you should call him a sahir, magician just like that. It is an issue that there is ikhtilaf by some people took that position. But because we're people of Ahlul Hadith and because we're people of the Sunnah, we shouldn't look at it small. When it puts it, its head up, we have to take it and we got to eradicate it from the root, from the source. Because again, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, from all angles, all angles, we're being desensitized to shirk and kufr. How is it? Look, something lesser than shirk and kufr. Everybody hates dogs. Everybody hates pigs from amongst us, especially in the Asian community. We introduce khurafat, khurafat, stuff that's not even real. You know, this stuff, all of this stuff. Because it's a way that our forefathers showed they don't like pigs. And yet, because of the society that we're living in, the cartoons, the cartoons that our children watch, they're pigs. Some of them are pigs. They've always shown us pigs and dogs. We all grew up cartoons, pigs and dogs. You become desensitized. So now when the lady has a baby, we, you have a child. Earth man is born, someone has a child. It's not uncommon for the relative, even some practicing people, to give you the baby's suit, whatever, some clothes, with a picture of a pig, with a picture of a dog. Where in the past, with the self of this ummah, it's not even imaginable. It's unconscionable. You can't fathom bringing one of those people of the past something with a picture on it, not to mention a picture of a pig or a dog. We have become desensitized and the standard is lower. Practicing people, kofar, shirk, assaulting us from every angle. So with that being the case, it is wajib from the ojib al-wajibat, from the most wajib things, that at this time, Christmas time, the father sits down and he gets his family and he educates them about the evils of this Christmas. The community has to be warned, reminded about the shar of 
the shirk and the kufr. Oh, you're not a real Muslim. You're not a real Muslim. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought us a religion that said what? Lakum dinukum deen. Now we've been talking all of this time about our children. But it's this not about our children. Doing these days, it's not permissible for you if you're working to go to the Christmas party. It's not permissible for you to accept the Christmas gift, not even the bonus in the form of money. If they give you money as a Christmas bonus, they give you money, they give you money. I'm not gonna tell you burn the money, throw the money out. I'm gonna tell you don't eat from that money. You have more rights to that money than anybody else, so use the money in something that's oppressive on you. Insurance that we have to get that's haram. Look, ikhwani. How many people took the time out just to consider, I'm falling into riba despite myself, like the Nabi used to say, despite your nose, despite your nose, you're going to fall into riba. But we're desensitized so it doesn't bother us because this is how life is. The interest that they receive or the money that they receive from the insurance they have no right to that insurance money but it's just a part of how we are when we get in the car when we get in the car we are in the hot seat in the car because we're paying that insurance that they don't deserve and it doesn't bother us because we're desensitized how many things have we become desensitized about so every time we get an opportunity to get iblis back like making the salat and pointing that finger with the idea, this is the finger, the ishara of la ilaha illallah, and it's more tougher on shaitan than the hadid, then do it and think about that stuff. Do it and think about that stuff. As parents, adults, when we get that money, I'm going to pay, use that money to pay something that's haram. These astronomical, exorbitant winter bills that we're getting, the winter bills, they stealing our money with the winter bills. Well, it, the point is, it's not permissible for anyone here. He has a store, can't sell Christmas trees, can't sell Christmas cards. Not permissible. All of that. So the point, Ikhwani, of today's reminder and today's remembrance at the top of the list is, part of being a Muslim is freeing yourself from shirk and the mushriki. If you don't do that, Something is wrong with our Islam. Something is wrong with our Islam. al Islam, lillahi bit tawheed. Submitting to Allah with tawheed. al inqiyad lahu bit ta'a. Being obedient, doing the things that he told us to do to the best of your ability. Make halal halal, haram haram. And freeing yourself from a shirk and the mushrikeen. We have to draw the line in the sand and we have to say, okay. That's your way of life, and this is my way of life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was narrated by the companion Mahmoud ibn Labid, Sahih Muslim as well, he collected the hadith. He said, the thing that I fear for this ummah more than anything, you companions, I fear for you, the hidden shirk. The hidden shirk, a shirk, a shirk al-askar. They said, what is that, ya Rasulullah, shirk al-askar, what is that? He said, it's showing off, it's showing off. Who in his right mind can't see the danger of a shirk if Ibrahim made dua to Allah to save him and his children from shirk and the Nabi وسلم, was afraid of a shirk for his companions and part of that shirk was riyah. And now today I don't have any concern. Abu Usama, I don't have any concern about myself because I'm Salafi. La. I need to be afraid more than anybody else. If those companions and Nabi was afraid for them, everybody here should never find himself like, okay, I'm okay. Because again, living in this society, how many things have we become negligent concerning those things? How many? My children, if they go to someone's birthday party or if they have a party in a school and they have a cake, I can't guarantee you that my kid won't go and blow the cake. I can't guarantee that. He knows he shouldn't blow the cake. But look at the pressure that's coming at him from every angle. 
doing the Eid, doing the Eid, the manifestation of the happiness and the celebration of Eid is not on par, not equal and parallel with what he's experiencing today in public school. We don't make that effort to make it equal or more. So at this time, he can't understand why we can't do it. And if his mother and his father are not there watching him, except those who are protected divinely, most of these kids are going to fall in it. So, Ikhwan, from the very beginning, you have a little child, Earthman or whatever, you have a little child, just as we are concerned, concerned, I want my child to drink the pure milk of his mother, the pure milk of his mother, not adulterated, not warmed up by the microwave, the radioaction, radioactivity, none of that. Ghost milk, nothing. If he can drink his mother's milk, then this is what we want for our children. That toheed, that purity of that toheed, our existence, that should be the main thing of our concern. Now I want to clarify something, inshallah ta'ala. Not apologize, but clarify. As what I'm saying here today, does that mean that we don't buy into community cohesion? Am I saying that we should be in an, on an island by ourselves and we should drop out of society and not do anything about progressing and being people who are actively engaged in raising the level of our existence secularly and other than that? Am I saying that? La, that's against the deen. That's against the sunnah of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-mu'min ya'luf wa yu'laf wa la khayra fi man la yu'laf. He said, the believer, one of the characteristics of the believer, the Muslim, he is a person who is sociable. He connects to people, his relatives, his neighbors, his co-workers, people in the street. How you doing? What's going on? Can I help you? There's nothing wrong with being nice as you're going through the Morrison's paid line. And you come up to the man or the lady, young or old. How you doing? Being cordial, being nice. Nothing wrong with that. That's from our deen. The believer, the Muslim is the one who connects and he allows people to connect to him. And the Nabi said there's no good in the one who doesn't connect and he doesn't allow people to connect to him. Anti-sociable. People can't get along with him. Yeah, that's part of al-Islam. Some people, ikhwani, they do damage and give in da'wah Allah because of the way they have this anti-sociable behavior. Some of them, they get close to Allah thinking this. I don't know if you remember seeing that program, My Brother the Extremist. When he came, the other guy shook the hand of the cameraman who was doing the documentary and the... The, the brother, the main brother, he was like, I can't touch your hand. If we shake hands, we shake hands with the left hand because that's the hand, hand we put the najasa on. That's anti-sociable. It's not our deen. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the Yahudi boy and visited him knowing he's going to die and gave him da'wah to la ilaha illallah. The Nabi connected with the people sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We can't sit with ahl al-bid'ah. We can't sit with ahl al-bid'ah. Just like that, open-ended. No, we don't sit with the people of innovation, but it has its rules and regulations. It has its time, it has its place, it has its ahkam. A salafiyah is not that janoon, that anti-sociable thing that these people have. We can sit with kuffar, we can sit with people of innovation with rules and regulations, rules and regulations. Sometimes you can't sit with disbelievers and sometimes you can't sit with people of innovation when the rules and regulations determine that and dictate that. So we're not telling you to be anti-sociable. I'm working and I have to work doing the Christmas or something. And if I create a problem for myself, I'm going to get fired. What should I do? Well, listen, I've told you what to do. Take your vacation at Christmas time, for an example. You want to work extra hours because everybody else is not working on Christmas? Does Islam say you can't work those? You can work those extra hours and take advantage of it and get the money that you earned. We're not saying to be anti-sociable. لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنَ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ 
ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصتوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصتين Allah does not prohibit you people those people who don't fight you for your religion these people fight you because your religion fight them back deal with them but these people Allah doesn't prohibit you those who don't fight you for your religion and they don't expel you from your homes they're not hostile Allah doesn't prevent you from being having bir with them al bar and bir being respectful and justice and Allah doesn't prevent you from being just with them be just because Allah loves those who are justice so who are just so our nabi al mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam who like ibrahim is a perfect example of a tawhid he coexisted with the kuffar quraysh in mecca he coexisted with the ahlul kitab and the kuffar of of medina in medina until they broke the contracts he coexisted with them when they broke the contract he expelled them he expelled them for self determination and preservation their presence would have been a problem had he allowed them to remain with the muslims they would have been an internal threat so when they broke the contract he kicked them out so the point is here in the uk we're not apologizing for being here you can say it's your country just as much as anybody else's country. It's your country just as much as anybody else's country. We pay taxes, we're law-abiding citizens, and we don't have to go anywhere. But in being here, community cohesion doesn't mean you have to say homosexuality is okay. Community cohesion doesn't mean the Muslim lady can marry a non-Muslim man. Community cohesion doesn't mean I have to participate in Christmas and all of that other stuff like that. لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ الدين. So let us get on top of this stuff, inshallah ta'ala, in terms of reminding our children, our wives, ourselves, not just for this occasion, but let this occasion, inshallah, be a springboard to remind us of the importance of the kalima of a tawheed. Lastly, Ikhwani, I don't know. If the hadith of the bataqa, al bataqa La ilaha illallah in one scale and all the 99 books in the other. La ilaha illallah is going to outweigh it. Don't let anybody sit for a minute and think that this hadith is just talking about la ilaha illallah on the tongue. Just, la, just the word itself. That kalima is heavy. Heavy when it's understood properly. It's conditions understood. It's implications and ramifications. It's madlulat. It's important. It's not something you're just going to say and it's just heavy just because you said it. In order for it to be effective, we have to be from the people of it. Haqqan. That's why some of those ayats, Allah Ta'ala mentioned, Ittaqullah haqqa tuqatihi. Have taqwa of Allah, the real taqwa. The real taqwa. Not just taqwa, but the real taqwa. So there's a real tawheed. And a real kalim of a tawheed. And then there's just the word on the tongue. Like Yomul Qiyamah, the person is going to say from the kufa, Oh my Lord, let me go back. Let me go back so I could do righteous deeds. Allah Ta'ala said, Kalla bal hiya kalimatun huwa qailuha. It's just a word that he's saying. It's just a word that he's saying. If you send him back, he's going to be wilder than he was with me before he checked out the first time. So the point here, Khwani, is a tawheed, a tawheed, a tawheed. And freeing ourselves from a shirk and the people of a shirk. Wallahu ala wa alam. Fadal. Question. I went over the time. No, it's fine. Um, you, got, you got to excuse me for these clothes and stuff like that. I was locked out of my house and they still made me give the talk. So. Afwan Ikhwani that I wasn't representing today, okay? Right. Question is What advice can you give to a brother who struggles to grow his beard and a sister who really struggles to wear the hijab but both have understanding of the religion? Everybody here we're struggling with things that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing, and we're struggling with things that we're not doing that we should be doing. So first thing is never think that this person is unique. Everybody here, 
except the one that Allah divinely protected and guided. Struggling. We're all struggling with something. Some people don't wake up for Salat al-Fajr consistently. And that's bigger than not wearing hijab and the beard. It's a bigger crime, a bigger sin. Because it's kufr to leave off the Salat. To not pray and not to do anything about it. So everybody is struggling. So that person shouldn't look at themselves as being unique in that regard. Nor should they say, since everybody else is doing something, what I'm doing is easy. No. But we all are struggling. Second thing is, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam informed us, and Allah as well in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يُجَاهِدُونَ فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ subulana. Those people who make efforts in my cause, I'm going to guide them. So in the Hadith al-Qudsi, the Nabi, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you come to Allah walking, Allah will come to you running. So all you have to do is make the small effort. You have to make the small effort. And the small effort begins with being sad for what you're doing. To know what I'm doing is a mistake. And having remorse about it. Nedam is called in, in, in Arabic. Nedam. Nedam. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and nedam who a toba. Feeling bad about what you're doing in and of itself is toba, meaning it's on the way to making toba. So just realize, if you make a little step and a little effort, Allah makes a bigger one for you. And that's from the characteristics of Allah azawajal. And that is, he runs. Al-harwala, al-harwala. Some of the people of innovation, they reject that. The Nabi used that verb, al-harwala, which means to run briskly and fastly. If you walk to Allah, you come to Allah, he'll come to you running. What does that mean? A lot of interpretations. It's been established in the sunnah, so it's from the characteristics of Allah. He does it in a way that befits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing, khwani, listen. The Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're going to make a distinction here between the guy and the lihya. And the girl with the hijab. He cusses lihya. And the girl doesn't put on the hijab. The Nabi told the people. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma amartukum bihi fa'tu minhu mastata'tum. Wa ma nahaytukum anhu fajtanibuhu. Whatever I told you to do. Do as much of it as possible. Do as much. And whatever I prohibited you from. Leave it alone. He didn't say leave as much of it alone as possible. Leave it alone. Abandon, abandon it. Leave it. And that be, that's because in the dunya, in usul fiqh, we understand this. In the dunya, something that you've been told to leave alone is easy. Leaving something is easy. It doesn't require effort. Just don't do it. But to do something requires effort. Praying is effort. Hajj, Umrah is effort. Someone say, hey, akhi, Pick this up and put, bring it from here to the door. You may only get three feet, six feet, halfway. Someone like me, alhamdulillah, get it all the way over there and out the door. But if someone said, hey, don't touch this thing. Don't touch. Just don't do it. So what is haram is easy. Ibtidatin, initially, is easy. Leaving the beard. The Nabi said, leave that beard. Leave that beard. Leave the beard. It doesn't cost you anything. Now when you go to cut that beard, you have to go to the store. You have to spend money on the razor. You have to get the, 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 the um, shaving cream. You have to clean the hair off of the thing. And over the course of someone's life, how many razors did he spend in that cutting his beard off? Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, he said to the tabi'een, you people, you tabi'een, you are doing deeds that are smaller in your eyes and more insignificant in your minds than a piece of hair. We, the companions, used to look at it as a mubiqa, as something that would destroy you. And he told the truth because cutting the eyebrows, people see that as something small. Anas ibn Malik, those companions, they knew that the Nabi cursed the one who 
did they I, cut the eyebrows? Cursed him. Companions looked at it as being small. So leaving something is should be easier than doing something. As for the lady, it requires from that lady a little bit more. And Ikhwani, and mentioning this, you know when we go out, like right now, I can go out, people may not necessarily know I'm a Muslim. I, I don't have isbal and stuff like that. But you, you don't know, because I'm looking. That lady from number one, when she goes out, she got to say I'm a Muslim. So it's not easy for them. They have something extra to do. And I think we should support those women. And in supporting them, we should encourage them that we have jealousy for our wives and that they shouldn't allow people to just come and see them. The Nabi used to have that kind of jealousy and it's from the jealousy of the man. Even with, as we mentioned one time in this class before, the Muslim man who's sitting in there, part of our iman in the ghayb, al ghayb, the unseen, we believe in the jinn. So when we pray and we're by ourselves in our home, we're going to take a sutra because there's jinn. We're not going to be, be intellectual. Nobody's going to come in front of me. No, we believe there's jinn. So we're going to pray with the sutra. So the good jinn won't come in front of us out of respect for the salah. As for the evil jinn, we don't see them, so it's no problem. Similar to that is what the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Satru ma bayna a'yun al jan the partition, the hijab, between the eyes of the jinn and the aura of Beni Adam is when one of them takes his clothes off, he or her, they say, Bismillah. My daughter, I don't want my daughter to stand here and you people can see my daughter without hijab on, her aura. I'm not going to tolerate that. And you're not going to tolerate that as well. Same thing with the jinn. Don't want the jinn seeing my aura, my daughter's aura. So I'm going to tell my family, hey, 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 you have to say bismillah when you take your clothes off. It is a partition to stop the jinn from seeing. Bismillah, Allah, the greatest name of Allah, inshallah. The names and the attributes of Allah, they're powerful, they mean a lot. That's when we make dua to Allah. So we ask Allah Ta'ala by his ism and a'zam. Allah, Rahman, Rahim, and Wahid, Al-Qahar. We ask Allah by his ism and a'zam to give the lady the strength, inshallah, to wear the hijab little by little by little by little, inshallah. Any more questions? Allah Ta'ala mentioned in a number of ayat of the Quran like in Surah Al-Munafiqeen وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ The izzah, the ana belongs to Allah, His Messenger and the believers. Al-izzah is with the believers. Allah described the believers who were with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad Rasulullah وَالَّذِينَ مَعْهُ شِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ Muhammad is the message of Allah. Those people who are with him are merciful towards the believers, strong towards the disbelievers. Allah Azawajal warned the people, warned the people who don't want to practice and take responsibility for da'wah and furthering the cause of Islam. وَمَنْ يَرْتَدَّ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ دِينِهِ فَصَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُمْ عِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا, يقا... ولا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَةَ اللَّائِمْ Any of you, if you apostate and you, you, you leave your religion, Allah is going to bring another group of people. They will be merciful and easy towards the believers and they will be tough and strong against the disbelievers. These ayat, you'll find them bringing this hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لا تبدأوا أهل الكتاب بالسلام 
وَدَيِّقُوهُمْ فِي الطَّرِيقِ Don't initiate salams to Ahl al-Kitab. Don't say salamu alaykum to them. And if they say to you, salamu alaykum, you say back, wa alaykum. The Nabi never gave them that izza like that. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and qala li munafiq, ya sayyid, faqad ahlak al-Islam. Oh, a'ana ala hadm al-Islam. Anyone who says to a hypocrite, hey master, hey sayyid, he has helped to destroy the religion. Your honor, your honor, the judge. Your honor, I didn't do that, your honor. Don't call him that. Just say, hey, judge. Hey, judge, I didn't do that. It didn't go the way the police are saying it went, judge. So you don't say to the munafiq, your honor, sayyidi. So all of these are manifestations of Islam not raising kufr and the kafiri. That's why Shaykh al-Islam, ikhwani, he mentioned that third aspect. Al-bara'atu min shirk wal mushrikeen. So what's the meaning of the hadith? If we're walking down the street, Umar radiallahu anhu saw a man and he was walking like that, real humbly. He hit him. He said, don't walk like that. Don't walk like that. You want these kuffar to think that we're weak? The Nabi was making hajj and going around the tawaf. The kuffar was saying, they're sick, they're sick. We make him get him. The Nabi said, take your ihrams and put them around here and show this shoulder and put the ihram under there and make your arms, your muscles strong and run around the thing. And the kuffar, they said, whoa, look at those people. So all of these are physical examples of what the Nabi taught us. And more important than that is an aqidah. Those companions used to love death more than those kuffar loved life. I don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. So anyway, pushing them down the small part of the street. If you're going down the street, there's a puddle of water in the street, the, the, the sidewalk. Puddle of water there and it's an easy path here. The sidewalk is not completely finished there. The bricks are broken, whatever, glass. You make them go down that side. But what's the meaning of that? That as you're walking down the street, there's an old lady, non-Muslim lady, walking with her grocery. You're going to push her down. It doesn't mean that. You're by yourself and you're walking down the street, down by Mickey D's there, down by Mickey D's by the masjid. Know what I'm talking about? McDonald's over there by Green Lane Masjid, McDonald's. You know that hill? What's that place called? That's not Coventry Road, man. That street. And then there are the football hooligans coming out. Seven of them, and it's just you by yourself. And you're going to make them go into the puddle of the water? No, you got to cross the street. You have to cross the street right there. So if the Muslims find themselves in a situation where there's some drama going on in the Muslim, in that environment. There's animosity and hostility. Then it's from Al-Islam to do something like that. It's from Islam to make the one who's been, there's hostility between you and him, to let him see you have the upper hand. You're not afraid. But you don't do that with every non-Muslim. That's not the meaning of that hadith. That's not the meaning of that hadith. Not at all. Not at all.